Hello, I'm Emily and I'm here with Emma Bernard in our fossil fish collection. Uh, and Emma has just been telling us all about Megalodon and how it's, well, we all know it's a very big shark, but now it's even bigger. Um, so we thought we would talk a little bit more about that, um, kind of how we know it's as big as it is and kind of what it means. So we obviously have a lot of Megalodon teeth. We do? Yes. There are a lot, <laughs> a lot of teeth on this table, but not a lot of any other bits of Megalodon. So is that quite normal for fossil sharks? Do we often just have a few bits and pieces? Yeah, so it is. So um, actually in the collections, we have lots and lots. We've got hundreds and hundreds of Megalodon teeth, but we don't have anything else belonging to Megalodon. And that's because sharks belong to a group of fish called the cartilaginous fishes. So their skeleton is made from cartilage rather than bone. So if you want to give your ear a bit of a wiggle, yeah, yeah. moves around. Yeah. Can you move the middle part of your arm? Hopefully not, <laughs> not really, no. So um, a cartilage, it's much softer than bone, so it doesn't tend to fossilise very well. But if you get the right conditions and you're very lucky, you can get some of that soft tissue preserved. So what we've got here is actually a vertebrae or a piece of the spine of a, um, a shark. This is actually Megalodon's great, great ancestor, a shark called Otodus oblicus. So this is about 50 million years old. So when this shark died, it fell down to the bottom of the water and got covered in mud and sand very, very quickly in something that we're calling a noxic environment. So there's no oxygen for even bacteria to come and eat all the soft, squishy parts. So if we're very lucky, over millions of years, that will gradually turn into a fossil. So presuming it's not destroyed during that fossilisation process and eventually you or I, we can then go out there and then hopefully find some of this and some of the vertebrae. So it is very rare. On the other hand, sharks are very famous for their teeth, mm -hmm. obviously. Yes. Um, and over the course of a lifetime, your average shark is probably going to have 30,000 teeth. Wow. Yep. So if you're one shark on average producing 30,000 teeth, the chances are a few of them will become fossils. Mm -hmm. So that's why sharks' teeth are actually some of the most common fossils that we can find. And that's also why we find a lot and lot of the megalodon teeth. Right. Okay. So we've obviously only got mostly teeth some vertebrae, and then not a whole lot of other bits of megalodon, but we can still work out, I mean, teeth are quite obviously quite large, <laughs> but we can still work out how big the entire shark was. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we've now got two different methods for working it out. So like, how different are these two approaches? Yeah, so over the centuries, people have come up with a number of different ways to try and work out how big megalodon would have been. So previously, most people have used the size of their teeth partial jaws and obviously sharks being around today you can do some comparison. So historically in the past by measuring some of the megalodon teeth comparing that to modern day sharks we've estimated megalodon to be about 18 maybe even 20 meters in mm -hmm. size. However a recent study published in the early part of 2025 actually used megalodon vertebrae in a spinal column and this involved a number of different researchers from all over the world, about 20 of them, all coming together to try and actually work out once and for all how big Megalodon might have been. So with this, they actually compared 165 different species of both fossil and recent sharks using their vertebral columns. And by doing that, they've estimated that some of the biggest Megalodons might have been 24.3 metres in length. That is a very big shark. Definitely. Uh, it's, I don't want to meet that shark. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you said that they compared Megalodon to lots of other different shark species, extinct living. Does that like add to the accuracy of, of the measurement compared to just looking at the bones? Yeah, it does. So this is actually one of the most robust studies on the size of Megalodon um, that's actually taken place. Um, as I said, there was about 20 different scientists all around the world, all experts in their own right, coming together to work out how big Megalodon would have been. And by comparing it to 165 different, um, other different species, um, we've got a much more accurate um, measurement. It's probably from a much larger female Megalodon shark. Right. Um, typically, female sharks are bigger than the male sharks. Um, but probably your average size megalodon would have been a little bit smaller than that big 24.3 metres. <laughs> Still quite a large shark, <laughs> yes. even if it's just a little bit smaller. Um, so because one of the things, see, I know very little about sharks with shark teeth, but they're quite great white shark-like in their appearance to me, to my very untrained eyes. Did megalodon look like a big great white shark? Because that's often how we see it portrayed in paleo art and 
illustrations and that yeah. kind of thing. No, you're right. So yeah, we just take, so this is a megalodon tooth here. Um, and if on the surface of it, it looks quite similar to a great white shark's mm. tooth, as you said. So it's that iconic triangular shape with the serrated edge, very similar to um, great white sharks today. And actually for a long time, uh, people assumed that megalodon eventually evolved into the great white shark, okay. which is why you see a lot of reconstructions, basically megalodon looking like a big beefed up or um, great white shark on steroids. Yep. <laughs> um, however, we now know because we found a lot more fossils and um, our understanding of how to read those fossils um, has got much better. Um, that the ancestor to the modern day great white actually lived alongside Megalodon right. and that they're actually from two completely separate families. And from Megalodon went extinct, the whole lineage went extinct. So historically, yes, we would have had Megalodon looking like a big beefed up, as I said, great white shark. But we now know by looking at modern sharks like the Baskin shark and quail shark, that are some of the biggest sharks in our oceans today, their body is much, as I said, um, quite long and slender. So megalodon would have been quite similar as well. And currently most experts um, believe that megalodon would have looked very similar to a modern day lemon shark rather than a great white shark. I'm hoping that megalodon didn't start out as 24 plus <laughs> metres long. How big, do we know how big a baby megalodon was? Yeah, so baby sharks are actually called pups. So um, a megalodon pup would have been about 3.6 to 3.9 metres in length when it was born. It's, it's still quite large. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> well, see, megalodon is extinct, but we have a lot of its fossils. So is there much that we can tell about the way that it lived or why it might have gone extinct from? The fossils that we do have. Yeah, absolutely. So again, looking at their teeth, we can work out what they would have been eating. Um, again, that tr um, stereotypical triangular shape, the serrated edge, it's going to be eating big fleshy meaty things, things like whales, seals, stuff like that. Um, we don't even just have to guess that, we actually have the fossil evidence. So we can actually find whale bones that have got megalodon bite marks and also um, teeth still embedded in them. So we know exactly what they were feeding on. Um, not only that, where we actually find the megalodon teeth, we can actually find meg megalodon teeth on all continents apart from Antarctica. Um, we know from the rocks that we find the teeth in that um, megalodon liked really warm tropical waters and also grew to like such um, huge sizes as well. However, it lived for millions and millions of years and towards um, when it eventually went extinct about three and a half million years ago, there was a big global ice age happening then. So with all extinction events, it's never just one Pacific freezing. There's a number of different factors. So we think Megalodon went extinct because it got a bit too cold. There was ice um, coming up into the North and the South Pole. The water got much colder and Megalodon wasn't able to adapt and evolve quick enough basically to survive. At the same time, as I said, the ancestor to the modern day Great White was swimming in the waters as well. And these ones, these guys were actually in competition with each other as well. So for the same dwindling food sources, they were um, probably the ancestor to Great Whites were out competing Megalodon. So it's a number of different factors, probably climate change, got a bit too cold, food sources run out. Um, and at about the same time, about a third of all marine life went extinct. Um, but as we find more and more fossils, and um, the reasons why Megalodon may have gone extinct will, might become clearer. I think Megalodon not liking the cold, I respect that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I guess maybe my final question is, Megalodon size, back to, back to that, it, it's over the time that we've known about Megalodon, how big we thought it was has changed quite a lot. It's gone from something like 14 metres up to 30, I think, at some point. Um, is, can we ever be sure? Like, oh, is 24.3, is that, is that it? <laughs> or do we need to take all megalodon measurements kind of with a pinch of salt? Yeah, so a little bit with a pinch of salt. So um, because megalodon's basically all soft tissue, apart from their teeth, it's very unlikely we'll ever find a complete megalodon skeleton. Um, but, you know, from all these different um, equations and different, um, people's basically fascination with how big megalodon might have been and the more fossils we find, um, it'll probably become more accurate um, as time moves on. But as I said, I think that's the really exciting thing about um, paleontology and going out and finding fossils is that with each new fossil find, you might just find that little key to unlocking the secret of how big megalodon might have been. Thank you so much, Emma. That's, they are incredible. Thanks for watching. Now you know how big megalodon really was, would you want to meet one? let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. 
for more videos from the Natural History Museum.